Hello students, once again I am back with class 7th SST and this time you are going to study about Tughlaq dynasty. Tughlaq dynasty continued from 1320 to 1399 as you can see it's written here and he is the founder of Tughlaq dynasty known as Ghiyasuddin Tughlaq. So as you can see it's written Ghiyasuddin Tughlaq, founder of Tughlaq dynasty. Now let us see about Ghiyasuddin Tughlaq. So students, Khyasuddin Tughlaq region was very short. He just sat on a throne for a period of five years. That that was from 1320 to 1325. Now let us see more about Khyasuddin Tughlaq. Khyasuddin Tughlaq was a great lover of education. He spread education all around. He loved education and he warned that in his kingdom, people should be educated. So he spread education. He has a strong feeling or you can say a strong passion for literature. He developed literature. He encouraged education. He respected the scholars. Why he respected the scholars? Because he was an education lover or education founder type of person. So he respected the scholars because these scholars basically give ideas regarding the education, basic things which is required. So he always respect the scholars and he also believe in developing a cultural society. He insisted on culture. He focused on building a culture and a people and education is a source of you can say a source to build a better culture to be in a good culture. So he developed a cultural society. He rewarded a number of scholars for their work. Not only this, he also attributed the achievements of his scholars. He aggregated the achievements of his scholars and he rewarded the scholars. Now, he extended many facilities to learned persons. So, this was about your Ghyasuddin Tughlaq. Though he cannot continue for a longer period of time on a throne and uh, his death was a bit mysterious. He died after that what? After that his son sat on a throne. Let us see about him. So, called as Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Now, who is Muhammad bin Tughlaq? Was he really known as Muhammad bin Tughlaq? No. When he was just a prince, that means when he was son of Ghyasuddin Tughlaq, he was known as Juna Khan. But when he ascended on a throne, he was titled as or known as Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So as you can see here, portrait of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Now let us study about Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Ghyasuddin Tughlaq or Ghazi Malik was the founder of Tughlaq dynasty as told to you all. And Ghyasuddin Tughlaq was succeeded by his son. As I told you that his son was basically, he was a prince because the son of kings were basically known as prince and his name was Juna Khan. When he took up the title or is known as Muhammad bin Tughlaq when he ascended on the throne. So he was born in Multan and he took up the title of Muhammad Tughlaq when he sat on the throne. But कहने का मतलब ये है कि वो मामली से प्रिंस थे जूना खान सिर्फ एक प्रिंस था एक राजकुमार था और उसको मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक की टाइटल मिली जब वो थ्रोन पे बैठा दिल्ली के थ्रोन पे बैठे सो मोहम्मद सक्सीडेड टू द दिल्ली थ्रोन अपॉन हिज फादर्स डेथ इन 1325 व्हेन हिज फादर डाइड आफ्टर दैट ही टुक द थ्रोन ही सेट ऑन द थ्रोन देयर इज अ लॉट अबाउट मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक एंड यू विल एंजॉय बिकॉज़ ही इज अ वेल नोन हिस्टोरियन और वेल नोन रूलर इन history Muhammad bin Tughlaq early life of Tughlaq let us see let us see gold and silver coins were distributed among the people at the time of coronation what happened at the time of coronation when nothing was going on the coronation took place so that time gold and silver coins were distributed and Muhammad Tughlaq was a scholar he was also a good scholar a lover of philosopher mathematics astronomy physical science and calligraphy calligraphy basically the art of writing so Muhammad bin Tughlaq also loved all these things he was also interested in medicines. You know, that time rulers ruled, but very few rulers looked after the overall development or overall growth of the dynasty or kingdoms. But here, Muhammad bin Tughlaq focused on all the dimensions, whether it's work, whether it's astronomy, whether it's medicine, whether it's health. So basically, he has a font or his skills in several languages known as Persian, Arabic, Turkish, and many other languages. He helped his father even when he was small. He helped his father in overthrowing Khushraw Khan. That means that Ghyasuddin Tughlaq was assisted by his son Juna Khan, or you can say Muhammad bin Tughlaq, in throw overthrowing Khushraw Khan. He undertook expeditions on Warangal in 1322 and 1323. 
so Warangal is basically a place a small district and there also he went and he took control over that so students what happened as I told you all that earlier the capital was Lahore and later Lahore uh, was not a capital it was shifted Delhi became the capital now again in Tughlaq dynasty what happened Muhammad bin Tughlaq brought a major change what change he brought he shifted the capital from Delhi to Devagiri you can see a map and you can see a Delhi is here this Delhi was basically the center which was ruled over by all the sultans all the Delhi sultanate all five dynasties and what happened Delhi was considered as a capital but this capital got shifted under Muhammad bin Tughlaq he experimented and he shifted his capital to Devagiri why he shifted we will be seeing the reason too so he shifted the capital from Delhi to Devagiri also known as Dalatabad Delhi was nearer to the northwestern frontier which was exposed to Mongol invasion why because basically I told you all about the Mongol invasion and one of the prominent leader under Mongol invasion was Chinggis Khan what happened at that time Chinggis Khan always tried to invade and always tried to capture the Delhi so what he thought that Delhi was nearer to northwestern frontier uh, franchise to Mongol invasion which was exposed to Mongol invasion so what he did but Devagiri would be a safer place so he thought that this Dalatabad Devagiri would be a safer place and almost free from Mongol invasion that means Mongol will not invade to that place so why not shif uh, shift capital from Delhi to Dalatabad or also known as Devagiri so Devagiri was situated at a central place that means uh, Devagiri was basically at the center as you can see so he thought that he can have a good control or he can uh, administer north and south both as well from this place so that is why he shifted his capital now what let us see was it a good decision was he succeeded in doing so so we will be seeing this also so he provided all facilities for those who were required to migrate to Dalatabad basically the people started migrating to Dalatabad what is migration transfer or you can say shifting from one place to another so the people from Delhi started migrating to Dalatabad wo Dalatabad jane lage aur un logo ko unhone assist kiya help kiya facilities provide kiya so that they can shift after a couple of years Muhammad bin Tughlaq decided to abandon abandon Dalatabad because he realized that he could not control the south from Delhi ultimately what was the result that he he found that he is not able to have good control from south he was not having a good control in the south from Delhi and north from Dalatabad so what happened he changed his mind and again in 1335 he transferred the capital to Delhi that means he was uh, started finding difficulties in having a control over both the uh, cities Delhi and Dalatabad from south and north so he decided to shift his capital again back to Delhi in 1335 तो हुआ क्या कि मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक जो पहले डिसीजन लिए थे कि वो अपने कैपिटल अब देवागिरी को बना देंगे वो पॉसिबल नहीं हो पाया ज़्यादा सक्सेसफुल नहीं रहा अल्टीमेटली व्हाट ही डेली अगेन ही हैज़ टू ही हैज़ टू शिफ्ट बैक हिज कैपिटल टू दिल्ली नाउ दे मच मोर अबाउट मोहम्मद बिन तुगलक वी बी स्टडिंग मोर लेट इज सी नाउ ही ऑल्सो डिड द करेंसी एक्सपेरिमेंट स्टूडेंट जस्ट सिंह कैन गोल्ड एंड सिल्वर कॉइन भी सेम विल द वैल्यू ऑफ silver and bronze will be same is it possible let us see what he experimented what he experimented basically i will tell you the in very brief or in very short that he made uh, the one gram silver coin equal to one gram one gram of bronze coin and but obviously this failed so let us study muhammad bin tughlaq needed to replenish the royal treasury so he decided to issue bronze Okay, Muhammad bin Tughlaq found that he need to replenish, replenish the treasury. Treasury means basically khazana. So, unko asa laga ki hume kuch na kuch changes ki zarurat hai. He issued bronze, and bronze coins were issued by passing a royal order. A order was uh, passed that order called forman. That these coins were to be accorded the same value. Friends, note this point that these coins, now the bronze coins which are issued, will be accorded the same. Uh, the same value that is means the same purchasing power as of one gram coin of silver that means now there is no difference between one gram of silver coin and one gram of bronze coin just think how foolish decision was this means how it can be possible that one gram of silver coin is equal to one gram of bronze coin so how it will differentiate what 
differentiation you can make between this both the coins if the value of both will be the same so ultimately what happened when the values got same so the persons who were interested in market in trade they basically take their hands back and this results into a loss of merchant merchant started refusing because the purchasing power of both the coins were same and ultimately it leads to depreciation what is depreciation depreciation decrease in the value of currency so there was a decrease in the value of currency and it ultimately results to the loss so again what happened he introduced a new coin of silver the other is and increased the size of the existing gold dinar from 172 grains to 202 grains so after the failure of this decision he introduced a new coin and that new coin was made of silver the at least an increase the size of existing gold dinar from 172 grams to 202 grams that means the dinar the gold dinar its size increases now one will be 172 was earlier and now it is 202 grams so this was the currency experiment which was done by mohammed bin tughlaq or juna khan now students what Muhammad bin Tughlaq the era the 1325 to 1351 copper tanka no copper currency was introduced was introduced in an economy that time during the uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq uh, region Muhammad bin Tughlaq introduced copper currency in 1330 AD Muhammad bin Tughlaq ordered the coins of copper currency and it should be considered equal in value of those of silver and gold coins now again see again what he did he ordered the coins of copper currency and it should be considered equal in value of those of silver and gold, gold coins that means now that copper coin is also equal in value of gold and silver coins but he failed in spite of his good intention simply because he was much ahead of his time wo samay se kuch zyada hi soch lete the jiska natija ye hua ki he failed so he has a tendency of thinking more than what is needed and which ultimately led leads to failure of muhammad bin tughlaq experiment with the coins now muhammad bin tughlaq gold tanka as i told he introduced bronze he introduced copper okay now gold but he failed in spite of his good in intention simply because he was much ahead of his time as i told you all in those days there was no elaborate machinery that time no machinery used to exist there was no such machinery to prepare standard coins so uh, as you see today the coins are made and you can see the paper notes that time there was no such standard machines which could make the coins so consequently the coins minted by the state could not be easily distinguished from private for forgeries okay what happened private forgeries used to take place because there was no authentication of the coin ye coin sahi hai ki nahi hai this authentication who will give so that time no such standard machinery was there as a result people get confused and they were even uh, even uh, even misleaded or misguided and private forgeries took place so every goldsmith and silversmith began to make copper coins in large number who are the goldsmith and silversmith who work with silver and gold so now okay so they are goldsmith and silversmith one who work with the gold is goldsmith basically you know in hindi sonar and one who work with the silver is known as silversmith so now they were acknowledged now this is an example of mohammed bin tughlaq fight money what is fight money a copper coin is struck to look like a silver tanka students note it down a copper coin is struck a copper coin is struck means it was struck to look like a silver tanka and meant to have the same value so the copper coin and the silver coin basically what happened they both were exactly looking the same and they have the same value these coins were struck only during the years 730 to 732 basically 1329 to 1332 century after which the experiment was abandoned now after so much of failure what happened this experiment was abandoned that means that was stopped that was moved now how was the administration under mohammed bin tughlaq we have seen his experiment with the coins okay now we are going to see what was the condition of administration okay well, how administration behaves under mohammed bin tughlaq when mohammed bin tughlaq was on the throne so he was an excellent administrator he skilled in administrating he hold a very good power over his territory over the area he conquered and he proved himself an excellent administrator 
but he was little confused also genius confused he was regarded as genius confused because he was genius but sometimes he can he was confused he was in dilemma and ultimately sometimes this leads to the failure so his conquest of Varangal Malabar and even Madurai made him the largest ever Muslim ruler ruled in India basically you know Akbar as a prominent ruler but here Muhammad bin Tughlaq is no more less than Akbar because he is also regarded as largest ever Muslim ruler ruled in India he opened many hospitals and also houses for the people he believed in divine right okay divine word you know meaning of divine pure so he he believed in ruling over the kingship of divine right means he was a very fair person uh, not biased and he his judgment was good he never judged uh, the things wrong so he believed in divine right he did not permit the ulemas to enter who are the ulemas ulemas are the priests basically the priests they are considered as the ulemas that time in that kingdom so that is why the word you will see here ulemas underline this word and mind uh, just note the meaning ulemas mean priest so he did not permit the priest to interfere in the politics that means he do not like anyone to dominate over the areas where he is ruling he used to have his own politi uh, politics ideas own ideas and he he did not like at all that anyone interferes in his ideas in his admin looking over the administration so this was not liked by the muhammad bin tughlaq last but not the least let us see some uh, more points as you can see here he tried to stop the practice of sati you all know students uh, what is actually practice of sati we have already studied and he made himself the highest court of appeal that means he considered himself as supreme after god he considered himself so he used to say that i am the highest court and people can come for appeal for anything to me he himself believed that he is court in himself so muhammad bin tughlaq believed that he was the shadow of the god as i told after god he just uh, considered himself and he considered himself as the shadow of the god so some of the inscriptions on his coin even at that time the coins which were made so there was an inscription inscription means something written with um, you will see the coins so you will find that something is written over it so that is what god is the supporter of sultan the word which is inscribed in the coins that is god is the supporter of sultan so this was all about muhammad bin tughlaq so much to study about muhammad bin tughlaq this was the least i can tell you as per your standard and if you will study there are tax reforms uh, many things are there but uh, it is not needed to uh, to be told to you all after that there will be invasion of timur you will study about the timur in his invasion and lodi dynasty and sayyid dynasty students that i will be covering in my next video so hopefully you liked it and you came to know a lot about muhammad bin tughlaq so keep on watching the video till it is not clear to you so understand the concept watch it twice thrice thank you students meet you in a next video with some other dynasty thank you students bye bye